When we graphed them, we would look at where they crossed, and that was our solution. So um, that is what we've already learned about. But, class, is it possible that when you graph two equations, they might be parallel? Well, think about that. Is it possible to have a solution to both equations at the same time if they never cross? It's not possible. It's not possible. So when you have parallel lines, it's going to be no solution. It's going to be no solution. It's also possible that when you graph um, both of them, um, you guys put an extra set of arrows on that line right there. It's possible that when you graph them, they're actually the same line. In class, if they're the same line, that means this is a solution to both equations, this is a solution to both equations, this is, this is, this is, this is. And so what do we say? Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. So that's what's going on today, is you're going to have some problems that are no solution, some problems that are infinitely many solutions. Yeah. And notice it says the lines are the same. Class, uh, um, all real numbers is not going to be used today. Because all real numbers kind of sounds like this point would be a solution, this point, this point. Everything would be a solution. That's not true, is it? We're just saying there's infinitely many solutions on this line, on that line. So infinitely many solutions is what we're looking at today. Um, class, let's uh, dive in here. Let's work a problem that says solve it by um, graphing and substitution. So class, to, to graph these, it's probably a good idea to do slope-intercept form. And this is in slope-intercept form. What's my slope for this first equation? Two. Yeah. And I'm going to think of it as two over one. What's my y-intercept? One. Yeah. So we start at one, start at the y-intercept, and go up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. What else can we do? Can we back it up? Down two, back one, down two, back one, down two, back one. And then grab a trusty straight edge and grab a line. And then class the up. Oh, I already see what's going on here. On the other equation, what's our slope? Two over one. What's our y intercept? Negative five. Are you guys already seeing that these are going to be parallel? Different y intercepts, same slope. Same slope. These are going to be parallel. In class, if they're parallel, we have to write what? No solution. To solve this by graphing, we would say no solution. There's no X and Y that I can put in here that would um, satisfy both of them. It's always going to make one of them incorrect. Now class, check out what happens with substitution. So I always encourage you guys to write these side by side. And when you do that, um, to solve using substitution, we're kind of in luck here, aren't we? The, uh, remember with substitution we think solve sub sub. Whoops, solve the sub, sub. We've already got y solved for, so let's just sub 2x plus 1 into y right there. And when we do that, we're going to be done pretty quick. Because class, I, I would like for you, for your next step, don't get the 1 and the 5 together. Don't do that. Get the x's together first. What happens when you try to get the x's together? No, don't they go away? So what are you left with on this side? Uh, one. 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 
where you left it on the other side. Class, do you guys remember from a few months ago when the variables went away and you were left with a false statement? This is false, isn't it? Do you remember what you would write? No solution. No solution. Yep, no solution. Just like that. Now, I kind of like it when this happens because did I have to like get X and then, or get, yeah, did I have to solve for X and then put it into this equation? I didn't have to do any of that. I was done right there. So class, take a look. No solution graphing, no solution with um, al solving it algebraically. You're gonna have variables going away and a false statement. Can we turn the page? Class, to solve this by graphing, um, these are in what's called a standard form. But what form do we want them in to graph? Yeah, slope intercept form. So one of the equations is going to be 2x. y-intercepts 3, and then slope up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1. Straight edge it. For our other equation, what do we got to do? slope-intercept form. I'm going to have to add this 4x over. Um, I'll put it over here. So we'll get 2y equals 4x plus 6. Is y by itself yet? No. no. Divide everything by what? 2. Uh, 2. And when, you, and when you divide everything by 2, you're going to get y equals 2x plus 3. Does that sound familiar? It does. It turns out it is the same line, isn't it? So save yourself some trouble. Just put an extra set of arrows on there. In class, if they are the same line, what do we write? Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. And now class... Um, can anybody predict what's going to happen when we solve this using elimination? Can anybody think back to what, how we would get infinitely many solutions back in the past? What's going to happen? Anybody know? No? No? Fair enough. No? All right. Let's let's find out then. Um, write them side by side if you would. I always do that. Um, class, to do elimination, make sure that they are in the proper order. X, then Y. X, then Y. Then go ahead and write one underneath the other. And class, right now, if I was to add these up, would either the X or the Y go away? No. No. So we got to multiply. What could I multiply by to make either the x or the y to eliminate? Multiply the top by a negative 2. Because that would make this negative 2y, which would make the y's go away. So I'm going to um, rewrite that down here when I distribute. So I'm going to get a 4x minus 2y equals negative 6. And now, class, I can add these up. But what happens to the x's? They go away. What happens to the y's? They go away. What happens to the 6's? They go away. In class, if everything goes away, what we have is we have 0 equals 0. Now, class, is that true? <laughs> That's true. And when the variables go away and it's true, what do we get to write? Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. 
Now class, this happens a lot on these types of problems where you'll get zero. So is everybody cool with the fact that when everything cancels out, you have to write a zero? Sometimes people get confused on that. But yeah, you gotta write a zero there when everything goes away. And class, that's it. Those are the two um, special cases. It's two special cases. Oh, just a heads up. Um, on one solution, they call it one solution because isn't it intersecting at a point? But doesn't a point have an X and a Y? So I just want to be clear on that. You, we think of this as one solution, even though there is an X and a Y. Just, just, just a heads up. Just a heads up. I just wanted to point that out. Um, class, this last problem is kind of silly. I don't know. There's, like, there's a lot of good word problems. This one's not because it just feels kind of made up and forced. But um, we can still knock it out pretty easily here. It says the perimeter of the trapezoidal piece of land is 48 kilometers. Um, the perimeter of the rectangular piece of land is 144 kilometers. And they want us to write and solve a system of linear equations to find x and y. Class, how do you find perimeter? Adding them all up. So we're going to go 4x plus 6y plus 2x plus 6y is going to equal what for the trapezoidal piece of land? 48. 48. For the rectangle, we're going to add those all up. So we'll have 18y plus 9x plus 18y plus 9x. 144. In class, we've got two equations. Can we clean these up a little bit? I would, yeah. Let's put the x's together. Isn't that going to be 6x and 12y? Um, back over here, how many x's? 18. 18x's and 36y. 36y. Class, would you use substitution here or would you use elimination? Elimination. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, I think we could probably pretty easily get this x by itself and it would actually work out nice. But I would probably do um, elimination. So I'm going to write 18x plus 36y equals 144. Right now, if I was to add these up, would the X rows or the Y's eliminate? No. What do you suggest I do? Multiply the top by negative two. Top by negative two. Oh, negative no. three. Yeah. Negative three. three. I agree. Negative three on the top equation. We'll write that for me. We get negative eighteen X minus thirty six Y equals. I'm going to take a guess. I think it's negative 144. And if that's the case, what are we going to get for our answer? Zero equals zero. Zero equals zero, which means this problem had infinitely many solutions. Yep, infinitely many solutions. So that just seemed like a real dumb problem, in my opinion. I am um, yeah, so class, what do you guys think about um, the special cases? Are you guys good? Mm -hmm. This is our last lesson before we test. Um, we're going to have a quiz tomorrow. So here's some practice for you. Class, the practice doesn't have any graphing on it, which is kind of unfortunate. My quiz does, though. It's got like two graphs, I think. So is everybody aware? I'm just kind of being on the forefront. Is everybody okay with graphing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would like you to do them all because these kind of go fast usually um, on the front page pretty fast. And I think it'll be important to see a variety. Certainly.